Hello everyone. Just begun and yes another new project which is Lawrence and the Arab Revolt and these are the first four figures completed. They are from Artisan Design 28mm Arab Irregulars mounted on camels as you can see and uh, really happy with the way they've turned out. Um, wanted to have a little sort of chat with you though about uh, one of my recurring themes in my videos which is all about realism and I sort of touched on it recently when I showed you the Krantara Jacobites. Um, now th these figures are really nice figures and they invite um, some quiet decorative painting. Now I, I, I'm not saying that I'm capable of of achieving very high standards of painting um, but at the same time I have deliberately try to sort of hold myself back from going over the top really with these figures. Um, there's a, I, I was searching for images of them on, on the internet before I began painting them and I found a website uh, which has got a bit of a curious name. Um, it's called Bennett Blaylock Doan's Miniatures and Painting and I think he's American. Um, he's, he's got a lot of uh, these figures painted up under the category of Desert Revolt and he's done the most incredible job on them um, but he is uh, a professional figure painter and I think his primary aim in, in painting these up and posting them was really to uh, display his talent. Um, he's actually painted them with a fantastic amount of um, detail on the saddle cloths and the the rugs and so on that are covering the camels and uh, he's given a lot of the clothing some he's, he's coloured the clothing basically with some fairly um, bright colours and there's an, an amazing standard bearer with a an Islamic standard um, which at first glance you would assume has to be a transparency but I, I have got a suspicion that he's hand painted the whole thing um, and I could never ever achieve that but I, I would argue that um, that wasn't the appearance of the the Arabs and the, and the irregular army during the Arab revolt um, so I've kind of gone for a little bit more of a drab appearance. I've used lots of browns and um, greys and, and blacks and so on. And I've, I've given the little touches of colour, um, for instance, with the tassels and so on. Um, but even even so, I, I think these, these figures are a little bit over, over colourful. Um, I, I was reading, I, I'm reading at the moment The Seven Pillars of Wisdom by T. E. Lawrence and I made a mental note of a, of, of a paragraph in it that I was going to read out to you and now um, going back I can't, can't find the, th the, the, the relevant passage but he's describing um, an expedition, a sort of raiding party that he joins and um, he describes a lot of the colours of the of of the uh, the clothing, the robes, and so on of the camel riders, and and he describes them principally as as being kind of whites and greys and um, or rust colour. He describes it as rust colour, stained with henna. Um, but in particular, um, he talks about um, the state that the camels actually got into because they drank. Um, from a particular well um, and he describes the, he very delicately describes the effect the water has on these camels as being of a medicinal nature 
but effectively the camels were just covered in um, their diarrhoea, their back legs, and the riders on the camel, because there were two riders to a camel, um, because a lot of the Arabs actually owned slaves and took their slaves into battle, the slaves would sit on the back back sort of slope of the camel, um, but both the, both the riders had to draw their robes up so that they didn't get smattered in all this camel uh, mess. Um, so far from the romantic um, image that you get from watching Lawrence of Arabia, for instance, um, and that is the problem really. That I think I think figures those Quantara Jacobites and and these figures. Um, you see them, they look so appealing that you really want to um, do a good job on them. And before you know it, you're kind of zest to paint them well has, has overtaken um, reality. So um, that's my excuse anyway for not, not attempting that kind of... Uh, um, level of detail on them and as I say I, I'm, I'm yeah I'm happy with them I th you know I think they look all right but um, if anything um, if you were going to go to town on them and make them look realistic you know you would you would give them a much grubbier um, trail weary appearance and the other thing as well I wanted to talk in terms of um, realism is is the the colouring of the of the bases now, I, I, my ears picked up recently. I was watching a, vi a video on uh, a channel uh, called McNab, and he was talking about how um, he was rebasing a lot of his um, desert bases because he used to use Wargames Foundry base sand, uh, Foundry are triads, and that was a colour that I'm kind of accustomed to using as well, but he, he describes it as horrible. I, I think it, it, it can look all right if you if you are careful, but it is far too bright and far too yellow um, and doesn't look like uh, a realistic kind of desert base for your figures. But my, I've, I've stuck with it for such a long time, be, mainly because it's a uniform it's a uniform standard color that i know i can obtain easily and and um don't have to worry too much about uh sourcing my paint or my basing materials when i base things for the desert but i decided i wasn't going to go that way starting on a new project um i wasn't going to use that color because i i am unhappy with it i don't think it's realistic um so I've kind of invented my own mix of paints. Um, I don't know if you can see there. I, I think that looks, I mean, this is another thing about reading Seven Pillars of Wisdom, that you get the impression from the Lawrence Arabia film that Lawrence, you know, fought in all this magnificent sort of um, Saharan-like desert with sand dunes and um, golden sands and so on. But um, in the book, he describes a whole variety of different terrains, including some that were actually quite well watered, even though they were desert. They did get rain on them, you know, once a year or something like that. And you would get a lot of um, tamarisk or wood woodworm and things like that growing, thorn bushes and so on. And... Um, you know things that the camels could graze on and pasture on. Um, it it wasn't like a, you know sort of a sandy kind of beach kind of material for for miles and miles. But there was that that did exist. Sand dunes did exist, but not not like the um, not like the kind of terrain that Lawrence describes in Seven Pillars of Wisdom. So I've gone for this kind of. Um, uh, sort of slightly kind of dry green kind of look. Um, it's a bit of a kind of concoction of paints. Starts off with the light shade of Foundry's um, peaty brown, and then I've built it up with two lots of. Um, sorry, I have to get them out to remember the name of them, but they're a kind of textured paint. 
from Coat d'Arms. One is uh, light earth and the other one is dark sand. Um, so the dark sand kind of gives it a bit of a yellowish look. And then over that I've dry brushed um, a life colours paint which was an Israeli sand colour which was intended as a kind of paint for the is modern Israeli um, armoured fighting vehicles um, but I thought that gave it a nice kind of grey um, sand grey kind of topping to it and then um, piece de la resistance is the the desert bushes which um, these were the other type of bushes that I purchased from um, Tajima and uh, that's what they look like on the uh, the sticky plastic now they are quite large um, you wouldn't be able to individually base a, a, um, a dismounted figure and fit one of those onto the base as well not without some difficulty um, and I had actually also purchased what they describe as diorama elements so these are desert diorama elements and, and you can see they are even bigger still so I'm only going to be able to use those on um, multi-base stands um, so I'm going to have to use those for future kind of crusaders and things like that that I base um, on multiple stands rather than these individually based figures um, but I think I think that does give a you know as, as I say Lawrence describes going through a lot of terrain that was um, quite difficult it would be impossible going for um, people on foot you know thorn bushes and a very kind of hostile terrain not not in terms of its um, undulations and and cliffs and things like that but just simply in terms of how it would shred your clothing as you walk through it um, so you needed to be on a camel in order to avoid um, you know tearing your skin as you as you traveled um, so really pleased with those I think they, they give it a really nice touch and then as I say um, finally I wind this up I um, I've based them individually because I'm, I'm, I'm not intending to kind of build up massive armies for this I want to get enough to play a sort of skirmish game um, haven't really thought about rules yet um, they, they don't I, I don't think really there are any um, skirmish type rules for the Great War um, that deal with um, the war in uh, the Arabian Peninsula and, and sort of Syria so um, I, I was thinking maybe something along the lines of um, a, a f sort of French Foreign Legion type set of walls and just replace the Tuareg with Arabs and the French Foreign Legion with the Turkish in, um, regular infantry. I don't know whether that would work or maybe the men who would be kings might be able to do something with that. That kind of appeals to me because it's got this um, sort of solo play mechanism in it but it, it is intended for a kind of an earlier period a sort of Victorian kind of colonial era type of game but it might be might be possible to adapt it for use and um, yeah I think that's about all I wanted to wanted to mention um, you know another project on the go now as I say so I'll be doing this one quite slowly as well but um, it's all on account of having booked a holiday next year to uh, go with the uh, what are they called cultural I think they're called cultural heritage I've forgotten their name apologies um, but I'm going on this sort of themed holiday following um, the theme of Lawrence and the Arab revolt in in Jordan so I'm looking forward to that so I thought I'd start wargaming it anyway there we go thanks very much for watching everyone bye for now